Welcome. My name is Abe Casbo, and this is Real Business. Today, we're with Dr. Andrea Simon. Dr. Simon is president of Simon Associates. She's a corporate anthropologist that takes businesses through change. Andy, welcome to Real Business. Thanks, Abe. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, Andy, you, um, you lecture around the country and ar around the world, and you, you speak with CEOs and, and different companies um, about how to look at new markets, how to open up new markets. So how do, what do you talk about? How do you take these CEOs from the, the, thinking about the way they think about business to thinking about new markets? How do we do that? It's, it's, it's not easy. I mean, we know from our neuroscience research that the brain hates change. It feels like pain. So what we start with is an understanding of where people are today. And um, I often use the work that came out of W. Chan Kim and Rene Rabon called Blue Ocean Strategy because it's a very provocative way of beginning to open up some minds. But one of the things that the book uh, does and the way we approach it as an anthropologist is that you have a culture today that worked really well. You often benchmark yourself against competitors. So that's one thing we have to start with. If you're just like your competitors or good or better than they are, then we really need to stop and think about that. The second thing is you, you define your market space in a particular way, and it's extremely bloody. Uh, hence a red ocean, blue ocean. Because what you're doing is carving up a limited space and uh, competing to see who can own it better, a zero-sum game. Some win, some don't. You won that loan, they didn't. But it's not a very compelling way to grow into new markets. And the third, you often count on your current customers to bring you more business. And so you understand them really well, but you're not looking outside of them. So in this wonderful world that we're now in, where everything is being redefined, question is how do I grow my business when I can't count on my customers, the old benchmarks may not work, and that red ocean is awfully bloody, what do I do? Yeah, so, so what's next? I mean, you know, you come up with an action plan. What do you do? How do you get these guys to think differently? It's a very interesting process, but what we do is we start with a visual awakening. Um, as you and I are discussing this, uh, it's really very nice, but you have to experience it. And so we use strategic canvases to help them actually begin to think about the industry that they're in and where they fit. And we start with even where they fit against their competitors. But if I, I could map out for you a picture, picture the brain science tells us is worth a thousand words. So I've got to break your mind map down. And so a strategic canvas is a wonderful way to map it and then to begin to challenge it. And so we begin to talk a lot about where you think you are against that competitive set, and we set the competition aside. So the first part is a real awakening. The second part is the thing that's so hard to do. We have to go explore. And I say that because unless you can actually experience it and your, ma your mind can actually see and feel it, it's hard to think about it in a new way. So I can do that for you. And there are lots of ethnographers out there doing participant observation and spending a day in the life of. Very useful. But at the end of the day, if you see it, ahas go off in your mind and that epiphany happens and the chemistry changes and oh my gosh, so where am I going to go explore? And these are several places that I have used with clients, but you would find very interesting as well. First of all, look across industries. Um, I had a client who went to UPS to see what UPS could do for you and what they could do if they were UPS. What other kinds of industries could you look at and see what you could learn from? The second thing is take a look at different market segments. You know, think about what Curves did to open up um, workouts for women who didn't go to gyms and didn't work out at home. So they opened up a completely new sector that wasn't between, was between the A and the B. Or maybe uh, you can really take a look at the scope of your business. Um, had a wonderful uh, situation where uh, somebody ran the back office of a medical practice extremely well. Well, I know someone who turned the back office into a complete business and they had 35 different uh, offices that they served in a completely different way and their income stream was from providing the services for all of them. So everything you have could be repurposed. Um, then you can uh, take a look at the functional or emotional side of this. Uh, how could you add some fun to what you're doing and what would that do? Um, and maybe you could also be an iPod or an iPhone which leaped over what an MP3 player or a Motorola Q was doing and opened up a completely new way of doing it and think about what iPhone is doing with all of the um, different applications that have turned into a business all by itself. Or what uh, iTunes did as a way of dropping down all of that music uh, onto something that was completely redesigned. So those are all sorts of different illustrations of places to go exploring. It's not easy to do, but take a camera, 
uh, take a little black book, go on a thought walk, get out of the office, put up some video cameras. You need to open your mind to see both how your customer and how other people are doing the things that you think you do so well. So uh, yesterday, um, JetBlue yes. decided to offer a, an all-you-can-fly pass for five ninety five. dollars You could fly anywhere as often as you like. Is this their way of swimming in the blue ocean? Well, they're trying to open up to people who haven't thought about using their airplanes for short trips or different trips. Uh, actually, it's going to change a very interesting dynamic in this whole thing. Southwest tried to do it with how you line up and so forth and keeping the cost down. I'm anxious to see how JetBlue does because it's going to challenge all of the assumptions that the competition has been bloodying up the red ocean with. So, you know, Andy, it's interesting that you're talking about, you know, um, that finding new markets. Uh, uh, Nationwide Insurance now has a, an insurance app for the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And so they're going after iPhone users who may become insurance, you know, who may buy their insurance simply by showing them that if you get into a car accident, you can take a photo and you can, you, you can solve your problem right there. Abe, you know, one of the things we talk about is how do you make it simple, easy, and more productive? And so what you're talking about is some really cool, innovative ways to do just that, opening up a completely new market for them. Thank you for being with us on Real Business. You know, we can continue this conversation online by visiting our blog or checking out our Facebook group, and definitely send us an email. And I'd like to thank today Dr. Andrea Simon, President of Simon Associates, for being with us. Pleasure, Abe. Thank you so much.